used to run a Christian magazine. I wrote about T.B. Joshua on the front page. You know, I even tried to speak to his people, spoke to his PA. Let me speak to T.B. Joshua. These are the allegations mm -hmm. that was given to me by someone who spent 14 years there as a deputy mm -hmm. prophet. Mm -hmm. The next thing I got, death threats. Mm -hmm. So th there's no way T.B. Joshua held my magazine in his church on TV and telling people this is not of God. Please tell us about that, us that, that shrine, that, that cult, exactly. that, 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 that place that is not a church. Exactly. Oh my God. The, 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 is a ritualist. It, that's what it is. Exactly. And people don't know. People so, don't know. African magic, black magic, that's you what you what? see there. Before you begin to speak about TV Joshua, you said something again when we were talking the other day that you, you used to go and whisper to TB Joshua <laughs> to say, to say Daddy, Daddy, before, you, before you, you close, that person there, that person, the one I told you about yes. was money. Prophesy. Please don't forget to prophesy on that one. And yeah. that time, they are playing an advert on TV. Yes. And poor gullible, manipulated, a, a, a deceived individuals mm. who are out there watching on TV are crying in tears thinking that God is moving. Right. Not knowing that Sidney is moving. <laughs> Sidney collected, she collects the info, give it to TV Joshua. Let's start from, why did you, why did you go to the synagogue? Exactly. Right, so I must put it up front to say, mm -hmm. look, I know the tricks, ne? maybe next week Sunday, or even tomorrow, I'll be headlines on Emmanuel TV. Mm -hmm. They'll say, Sister Sikla is a fraud, Sister Sikla is this, like they've been doing to Pesola. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Pesola, the one that, Bisola, wrote, yes. Bisola, the yes. one that yes. wrote the book yeah. on TV Joshua. Exactly. Now, I know, I personally know Pesola because we stayed together at the synagogue. I'm mm -hmm. sure Pesola is watching right now. Yes, yes. She, yeah. Yeah. And please yeah. follow Pesola, she has a lot. <laughs> you know follow her exactly. on yes. Facebook, and she has a lot. Uh, Bisola, yeah. I tagged her, so exactly. I'm sure she's watching. Yeah. Yes. So mm -hmm. I personally stayed there with her, and I know how it works. If somebody is attacking, automatically they wait. How did you get to TV to synagogue? <laughs> so I was at Philip Banda's church, and there was we were okay. We were first shown videos of the miracles from TV Joshua. So he has a relationship with TV Joshua. You not see. anymore. You I see. mean, he used to have a yeah, relationship. Not yeah. anymore. Um, and not anymore. That's true. People mustn't lie here. Yeah. And then um, they used to have a relationship, and then they would show us at overnight videos of TB Joshua of him praying for women. And then there was a lady that used to take people to synagogue at that time. Her name was uh, I think Mama Sarah or Mama Sandra, something okay. like a white lady. Okay. And then there was a trip. Woo! Impact for Christ. We went to synagogue, and everyone was excited. And at that time, I wanted to go more than ever because I had an ear problem. Okay. So, my ear problem, I had an operation for my ear because uh, my dad, I think my mom and my dad were fighting at home. I wanted to intervene and he bashed me on the wall. <laughs> mm. And then I was partially deaf. So I went to had my ear operation, okay. but I was still slightly deaf. So I had just started working at that time. I remember I just started working. I had my small car, my Fiat Palio. Mm. You know, I was, I was okay. Mm. And then the trip at that time was 10,500 Rand, paid for the trip and went to Senegal. Got to Nigeria. We got to Nigeria. Our trip was supposed to be seven days. Mm -hmm. Prayer line happened, and then I was prophesied on prayer line. By who? By TB Joshua. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was prophesied on prayer line. Um, I think I fell and I manifested, and I was prophesied on prayer line that I need to stay. I'm an evangelist, okay. and I need to stay at the church. <clears throat> okay. Your, your, your manifestation, would you say, because definitely you were not faking it. I don't know what happened to me, but... I was when I came to okay. demons. I think exactly. Joshua's demon hypnotized you. When I came to, you. I was told I need to stay at the church. Okay. Yeah. So the seven days came, and then the South African group left, mm -hmm. and I was then left. you remained. There. Yes, yeah. I was because you are an evangelist. Yes, okay. and I need to stay for training. Now I was the first black South African girl to stay at the Synagogue Church of All Nations, okay. right? So it's not a hearsay, it's not a what, what. I was there, mm -hmm. I lived there, I lived through it. Um, so I stayed at the church and then I was moved into the dormitory, stayed with the disciples at the dormitories, and sleep was something that I never knew. We never slept. When, mm -hmm. when daddy is not sleeping, we don't sleep. Mm -hmm. We're running around. So for me, you know when 
with my experience with Philip Panda, when I spoke, people never believed me. Mm. So certain things I just kept to myself and I thought, you okay. know what? I don't need this drama. No one is gonna, Let me just keep quiet yeah. because people will just never believe anything mm. I do. I say. So at that time, I was in the chorister. I was singing in the praise and worship team there mm. with the three sisters. And uh, at, now this is synagogue. Yes. Synagogue. You, yeah. you were a chorister at synagogue. I was a synagogue. chorister at yeah. synagogue. So you stand in front. So you standing, standing in front. front. Yeah. Yes. 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 Mm. I was a chorister at synagogue. And um, remember, I was the first black right. South yeah. African right. to be staying there. <clears throat> and then uh, I remember my dad, T.B. Joshua then paid for my parents to come because my dad wanted to see where I was staying. Okay. So he came to Snagog, came to see where I was staying, and uh, before I get to that part of my dad, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then I was at the synagogue. So the first two months was difficult because I need to adjust. I'm South African, I'm in Nigeria, and yeah. the culture, it's the rough food. and everything. Mm. But I was very close to Sister Bisola. Now, Bisola is the one that wrote the book. Yeah. Okay. So upon my arrival, I think within three weeks, I was told, you're going to Singapore. Ah, Singapore! Mm. Yes, you're going to Crusade Singapore. Went to Singapore. With T.B. Joshua. With T.B. Joshua. Yeah. So we mm. flew in. I remember I flew with Bisola and everybody. Okay. We flew to Singapore. We got to Singapore. Mm. Got to Singapore, so now what we do? TV Joshua was having a big crusade in Singapore. Mm. So we fly a month. But he tried to give you money to get to Singapore. Yes, oh yes. yes. So we were called to the office and he was like, you must take this money, put it in your suitcases. And I was like, ah. So that, that's, that's like hundreds for, of thousands yeah, of, yeah, for dollars. of dollars. And I was like, ah. I don't want to be arrested for money laundering, you know? So he yeah. wanted you to launder money. For launder you. money. Like to take money that okay. and yes. like, no, no, I don't want to be arrested for money laundering. Which is illegal. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I mean, when you get to the airport and the sensor... You have to declare. You declare. Yes. So then, um, I don't know what happened then. Mm. I know there was a sister who had a credit card. I don't know what happened with that situation, mm. but anyways. Okay. So we got to Singapore. So we go there like a month or three weeks before. All right, all right. Before TV Joshua He arrives, comes. yeah. So when we get there, we must now make sure... When TV Joshua arrives in Singapore, prayer line is ready. Mm -hmm. People who are coming to the prayer line are ready. We already know the who's who's okay. in the country. Hold on. <laughs> you know the money people. Exactly. Yeah. I, I want us to I want us to, to take it slowly but surely. Mm. Okay. There's somebody watching right yes. now. Yes. I'm concerned about people. I'm mm -hmm. concerned. I, I'm not just sitting here with 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 with, uh, with uh, my brother here and my sister so that we can be excited about exposing mm. somebody. Mm. But my main concern is people who are spending thousands of dollars, yeah. thousands yeah. of rands, yeah. yeah. traveling to TB Joshua, thinking he can see, yeah. thinking he can prophesy, yeah. thinking he can uh, all yeah. these miracles are genuine yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But uh, take us through the prayer so, line. And 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 he must spend. he must forgive us when we laugh and smile or whatever <laughs> because it's just funny because this is. This is deception. Exactly. We see it. Mm. So we're not going to take it serious because we know these are like lies. So when we, when we get to, when you get to, so I was there in Singapore. Yeah. Makes sense. So it's my first time in Singapore. So we get to Singapore and we're given this lavish hotel and then we told, okay, fine, this is the church that's hosting us. And we, we get to meet the church people. So now remember at that time I'm new, so I'm getting to know these things. Okay. But I'm, I'm always shadowing Brizola mm -hmm. because now she, she. At that time, she was she calls herself she was the official madame. Mm. <laughs> so we okay. we when we get to a place, we need to know that, for example, this is where the prayer line will okay. be. People who want to come to prayer line, who they are. So before TV Joshua comes, we screen you. Okay. So screening happens. What we call screening. Okay. You fill in forms. You tell us who you are. What's this? What's this? What's this? You come and you, we interview you. So as disciples, we need to find out from you. What's your name? What's your surname? Why are you here? What's your problem? And you probably tell us you've got cancer. Da, da, da. Show us your medical report. You must bring your medical report. So you show us your medical report. This is synagogue you're talking yes, about. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. You bring your medical report of what's wrong with you. And then, okay, fine. So obviously from the way you're talking, then we find out. So what do you do? No, I'm a businessman or um, whatever, whatever the case is. So already, I know this one's a businessman. I have to write notes. That is why if people have been to synagogue, you'll note. Disciples always have a pay, pay, paper and pen in hand okay. everywhere we go because we need to always be jotting down notes and everything. Mm -hmm. So already we know to say, okay, fine, this person is this, this person is that, this person is that, and we already know what's happening. So, and then, the, the, which I say the beauty, no. The thing is, it's in the you're not just a chorister, but you work everywhere. Right. Right. So by the time TV Joshua lands, then you'll be called to his hotel room 111. But I would never understand why um, the three sisters were always in TV Joshua's hotel rooms. Like mm. everywhere we went to, 
why they were there and what and the I would ask the three I would ask the three sisters yes, are part the three of main singers yeah they sing okay yes. and I would ask to say but why are you guys sleeping here and you're here in daddy's room all the time and mm. you're not sleeping where we sleep and I say no sister sickness because we are cooking for him we're ironing for him and I once said to them ah even me I want to be part of this I want to cook yeah. he said no 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 you can't so I mean I'm a very curious person I was like okay fine not my business but what I saw was before the actual crusade, before there'll be prayer line, we have a deep brief with TB Joshua. Yeah. Mm. So we'll tell him to say, okay, fine. So in the prayer line, it's Israel, mm. it's Zwandile, it's Ali, mm. it's, it's Solomon. Solomon, it's who and who and who. Mm. Then we'll say, okay, fine. So this one and this one and this one, they are the money bags. They are the ones that need business, people. Yes, business people, they yeah. need big prophecy. And then this one and this one have problems like this. So things that we see that are real ailments that we know that they might not really be able to be sorted out. Yeah. We kind of push you to the back. But if you have money, we'll bring you to the front because we always say at the end of the day, he can pray for you, but it's your faith that heals you. Yeah. So mm. exercise your faith. Mm. So I was like, ah, okay. TV Joshua is a scammer. He's a scam. So then I would Fraud. Like, Fraudster. 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 So That's then, what it is. So then I would see that I think, okay, fine. Not my business, not my monkey, not my circus. We left Singapore. Oh, but in Singapore. <laughs> My guy, my guy, my guy, disciples were now sexing each other left, right, and center. Huh? Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. People will always say, ah, TV Joshua's disciples are very horrible, they are cruel, they are this, they are this. But behind the scenes, we are sleeping with each other. Now, here's the thing for me, ne? I was never prophesied on that I'm sleeping with disciples. And I remember in Singapore, TV Joshua called me to his room one day and he said to me, one of his boys wanted to marry me. What would my parents say in South Africa? And I was very honest with him because mm. my dad was still alive then. And I said to him, my dad told me, if I marry a foreigner, he will never bless that marriage mm. in his life. Mm. So that's how it ended. But there were relationships that were happening, mm. but they were unspoken. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. So we went back to Nigeria, continued staying in Nigeria. Now, the most weirdest part is that when you're sick as a disciple, you don't get to go to prayer line. We have our own private doctor and clinic within the synagogue mm. at the back. And um, so everyone else goes to pray. The whole world must come for healing. Yes. yes. But when disciples are sick, no. they've got a private doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now see that. And um, the most amazing thing for me was um, I know people will say, and I'm sure people are saying, yeah, she's a bitch, she's having sex. Look, I was in church, and if God was there, I was supposed to be picked out and say, let's deliver you from spirit of lust, mm. which I never was. Mm. So I remember at synagogue and then I had an abortion at the synagogue. Mm. <laughs> How did it happen? Who did you sleep with? I was sleeping with one of the camera guys, you know, and I also slept with Daniel Wiseman. He's a wise man now. He's wise man he's Daniel. 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 He's a wise man now. Mm. And he's Daniel. So I, I was pregnant. So, so, so hold on. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Look at it. People, <laughs> this is not um, this is not a movie. No, no, no. This is not um, a setup. Yeah. This is reality. Yeah. yeah. I loved it. This is reality. So many gullible people out there. When I saved my story, mm. when I saved my own story, people said, he's crazy, he's lying, some say he hasn't Bruno, repented. He hasn't, re he hasn't repented yet, yeah. he's still doing stuff, but Look, this is Sitler. She's been to a, a synagogue. I loved it. She, she's, there's wise man Daniel. You yeah. see him coming on TV. Yeah, he's still <laughs> there. When people look at still there. these wise men, they say they're like TV Joshua. They're so holy. They're so but nothing. Here's uh, uh, I laugh because I've slept with most of them, and for me, I remember there was a, and, and, and some and maybe you ask yourself, but where did you sleep with them? Mm. Right. If you know synagogue, there are places that. Nobody knows where the disciples sleep. We've got our own dormitories. Mm. And visitors' quarters, most of the time, visitors are not there. So in between thingies, we know our signals. So we go, we do our thing, and we're out. So when I discovered I was pregnant, I remember I confided in one of the sisters. I think it was Sister Yetunde or Lamine, mm. someone there. Mm. And I told them, this is my situation. I was taken downstairs to the nurse. There's a nurse there in synagogue, and mm. I had an abortion. Mm. Well, how did that happen? How did they perform the abortion in the house of in god the house of god downstairs in the house of god church. now how was the process no no no. i went there and um because i was now not seeing my period i was mm. sick and everything then they did the test and i was pregnant and then uh they called in another doctor to come in and then 
I remember they, they used the old way of termination, the one where there's a steel, where they pull oh, something out. Yeah. And I remember I was scared now. I was thinking, oh my God, please don't tell daddy. Because we call TB Joshua daddy. Mm. Please don't tell daddy. Please, please, I beg, don't tell daddy. They said, no, don't worry. Don't worry. Everything is fine. You're okay. Immediately after that, I chorused the practice. I went straight on stage to rehearse. As as soon after happened. abortion. Immediately after abortion. As if nothing ever happened. But when you see people going there and you see TB Joshua calling them out, so you've got a spirit of lust. Yeah. You've got this. Yeah. Very sister Sitley. She's seen him on the altar. Right. Right in the house. Right in the house. Yeah. Some of the sisters that I Man. stayed with, and some of the sisters that I stayed with at synagogue don't have wombs. Um, these were sisters that would confide in me and tell me. Because I was worried to say, ha, huh, I'm having an abortion in the man in the church. I'm going to be in trouble. Hmm. And they were like, ah, don't worry. Don't worry. It will be okay. After all, you are given to the church. You need to be, um, uh, you are given. Because I was told I was supposed to stay there for a very long time. Yeah. You know? And... For me, it was a way of life where you see disciples don't get married. Um, if disciples do get married, you kind of get ostracized out of the leave. church. Yeah. Yes. I've got a friend, her name is Angela. She was the first white disciple to stay at the synagogue. So she got married at the church and then she also saw things that she subsequently left. She wants nothing to do or hear or say about synagogue, church of all nations. She left. And me being there... Um, I'm very vocal and I always ask. So every time at night we have disciple meetings. Mm -hmm. Now this disciple meeting, that's when we are, we learn the language. We learn the speech. We learn the behavior. We learn what to say, what not to do. That is why when visitors come, for example, when visitors come, most of them will say, ah, TV Joshua's disciples are rude. They are cruel. They have no hearts. They are bullies and everything like mm. that. But the main thing is we already we told what to do, what not to do, and what not. And the most amazing thing is you are assigned. For example, if they say there's a special group coming from South Africa, you are assigned to this group. You must be in charge of them. There are certain visitors. Some, some, some visitors don't come to the dining hall. Mm -hmm. Some visitors don't come to the dining hall because mm -hmm. everyone sits in the normal dining hall. Yeah. Some visitors, you, must, you are assigned to go issue and give them their food. Right. In their rooms, be it breakfast, lunch, or supper, they okay. just don't come to. So the male and females are attached to males. However, you are just. Attached it's not like to female to female. No, no. For example, I'm from South Africa, so if South Africans are there, they'll attach me to say maybe they'll understand me better. Mm. And I'm very eloquent. I speak well, so I'll be attached to say you look after that person and make sure that person is fine. Whatever that person wants you to. What is whatever? Whatever okay. they want you to. Now <laughs> you were there. Yes. You were assigned to to this rich man. Yes. Mm. And then the wife walked in on you. Oh my God! Yes. Yes. I, I wish I wish I could take my clothes off to show you. So I think my parents remember this because I was flown in from synagogue because my bums, my buttocks, like the mm. left and the right, have burn marks. Mm. Right. I was burnt with hot water. <laughs> mm. Mm. I was burnt with hot boiling water. Because, unfortunately for me, um, this rich businessman, he is a South African. He is in South Africa. A lot of people know him <laughs> in South Africa. He is in South Africa. He went to TB Joshua. He went to TB Joshua's mm -hmm. and I was assigned to look after him. And it so happened, I was caught in the act with the businessman. How did the, it happen? By the wife. You know? Are you guys allowed to do that? They said, take care of him. So Take basically. care of him. So it was a... Uh, Sexuality, it's normal. whatever. So it's kind of like normal within with within some of the church. girls within it's the normal, church. It's like it's an unspoken, okay, normal thing. Yeah. And I want to make an emphasy here. You know, in a church, when you're having sex, when you're given the free lines, you know, the license to have sex like that, it means that place is a shrine. It's a sort of worship. Exactly. You know, it's a sort of worship. When, churches, when you see a lot of fornication happening, where people don't really care about it and talk about it, because it's you need to do that. To be able to keep the covenant with yes. Satan. And so, the altar. so yes. for me, I was there and I was busy. I was on top of the man. I was busy. And the next, I could feel, it's like I felt as if cold water burnt me. Like, you know. But now remember in the dining hall, if you've been to synagogue, you know, there's always an urn that's boiling with hot water. Okay. 24-7. Okay. Yeah. So I think that woman went there, took water, and then she came. As that's his wife. Top, yes. Mm. And splashed me. Mm. You know, and when I was splashed with that water, eh! so I quickly, quickly got dressed and then I ran down. So I ran and I reported this incident, right? And then I was taken to Daddy's office, TB Joshua's office, mm. and I explained what happened. I, I remember I had to, to yes, I had to take off my dress to show the my bums because mm. now I started getting you know after being burnt, those yeah. boils, <laughs> those yeah. boils. Yeah. so I started getting boils on my buttocks. 
And then this side, I've just fornicated, this side my bums are boiled, boiled. I was flown back into South Africa. So I flew back to South Africa and I remember I was taken to one of the private clinics here because I had third degree burns. Mm. And when I was released from the private hospital, I had to go home to heal. So if my, if my mom and my siblings can remember this, I would walk around the house naked because I couldn't, it needed to be exposed to cold air because yeah. it would damage Heal. itself and yeah. do whatever. And every time I was told, when you're asked what happened, you must say, you were walking past the urn and the, and the, and the, and the, and the tap of the urn burst and the water burnt you. That was, a, that was my story. That was the narrative they gave that you. That was the narrative of what, my what story. What did TB Joshua say to you when you met him in the office and you were showing him your battles? When I showed him, he said, ah! Hey, bring it down, bring it down. And then I had to bring it down. And then they spoke Yoruba that I didn't understand. Yeah. And then the next thing I was told to go out. Then I was called back in again. Then I was told, Sister Sikle, you are flying out to South Africa. Go pack your bag. So the very next day I was flown out to South Africa. Because remember now, you must contain this wealthy businessman yeah. okay. who's funding, the, who's and bringing lots of money. Yeah. So in their, to them, they were told that I was chased. Because... I was caught yeah. in the act. You forced yourself. But for me, I knew that I had to go get better. And after I got better from my healings of my buttocks, I went back okay. mm. to synagogue. Because I stayed, mm. I think, for about a week or two. Then I flew back to synagogue and I was there at synagogue. You are, <laughs> you are walking down the stairs. Was it, was it when you went back for the second time or before you left? When you're walking down the stairs... You were following TB Joshua, you were telling him that I want to go back, I want to go oh, back yes, to South Oh yes, I was Africa. beaten up, yeah. Yeah. I was beaten up, yes. TB Joshua beat you I up. was beaten up, yes. How so, do that? I think I've shared with some of the people, if some of the people remember, I've shared with some of them. Now remember, um, I think I've, I've shared with some of the people that are here. And I, and, and I was like, no, it was holy anger. It's, you know, that's how they say it, daddy, yeah. holy anger. Because I remember at that time, I had my second abortion. Okay. And I was tired In now the synagogue. Yes. Yeah. So I was tired now of this. And I was like, look, I need to go back to South Africa. I want to go get married. I want to build my life. I can't always be here because I would watch that uh, disciples don't get married to each other. Mm. And here it's just like, I'm just... And on top of that, I, I, after I had my second abortion, I was punished. I was sleeping in the car park. Right? Mm. So I was sleeping in the car park there. And when Why I, were you punished? Because I was vocal and then they caught my cell phone, my cell phone, I was having chit chats with all these men visitors and all these people. Mm. And in most of them, I was telling them what was happening and how I wanted to come back home, mm. you know. And I remember um, Jabu Songwani from Joyous Celebration, yeah. he came to synagogue with his crew. And when he saw me, he's like, what are you doing here? As beautiful as you are in South African, what are you doing here? Mm. And I kind of briefed him. I said to him, ah, Jabu, I want to go back home. Mm. I'm not happy here. He's like, so why aren't you going home? And I'm like, but I can't. You don't understand. I, he wouldn't mm. understand. And mm. I can't really talk much. I'm like, I can't because my passport, when you get there, your passport and everything stays in the office. Yeah. Mm. I'm like, my passport and everything is there. They but take, I want, they take yes, it away intentionally. Yes. And I'm like, but I want to go home. And I remember Jabu, he was there because he was shooting him and Joyous, a few members of Joyous Celebration. Mm. They were shooting the song, God's time is the best time. So Jabu kept on saying to me, something is wrong with this church. You need to leave. And I'm like, I wish I could leave, but I couldn't. So now I think some of the disciples saw that I was continuously talking to Jaru yeah. and the Joyous Celebration okay. members. Mm -hmm. Then I was reported at the office. Then I was told I'm no longer allowed to be seen with them. I was assigned to a different group. That's when I boiled it out. And I remember to be Joshua was walking to his room. So his bedroom is right at the end of the church. End, mm. end, 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 end. So he sleeps mm. alone there. And I followed him up and I He sleeps like, alone with his wife? No, 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 no. Disciples are at one level floor and mm. then the wife is on a different level floor. They don't sleep together and say, he's alone right at the top, top, top end of the church. Mm. So I was following, running up to say, because now I want to go back to South Africa. I don't mm. like being here. Because I remember Jabu Slohan is saying, you now look like a Nigerian, You're, even your English, everything. And I'm like, I want to go home. I don't want this anymore. Hey, so now... I'm very, when I want something, I want something, mm. you know? So I think I kind of provoked or pissed him off and the next thing, ha, I don't know what happened. I was, boom. TB Joshua hit Yeah, him. yeah, yeah. And then I kind of felt that. But then I remember when he walks to his disciples, so I fell onto somebody and I was so, I ran to my room, I was upset. And then obviously the sisters came and said, ah, don't mind, holy anger. You know, he's your father. Mm. You know, a father disciplines a child. Mm -hmm. You are a child now. So please understand. So I had to stomach it in and I was like, Ah, okay. All right, fine.
but I still wanted to go home. Right. You know, then we were taken to the prayer mountain and I'd always, this for me was always something that I questioned to say the prayer mountain that visitors go to is not mm. the prayer mountain that TB Joshua goes to. How is that? You know, it's completely different. It, 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 he might, they might show you um, old furniture and say, ah, this is, remember it's a script. Yeah. When you come to prayer mountain, we'll say, ah, okay, everybody, praise the Lord. That's what we say. Mm. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Uh, on your left-hand side, this is the place where T.B. Joshua, men of God, prays. Mm. Da, da, da. And it's old, 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 old. But that is not the one. Where he prays, ha, ah, God, hmm. I have seen with my own is, eyes. Is that where you Please. used to swim naked? Please. Uh, that is where. Ask Bisola, she will tell you. There, you don't know whether it's human being or fish that is there. You don't know what is going on there, but it's diabolic. You know? And that is where many people's pictures are there. If the picture is not buried, the picture is uh, Stuck to the, nailed yeah. to the tree. Mm. That is where everything happens. But now for us, it's like, you know, you look at back now and you say, but, like, I always pinch myself and I say, but see here. Like, you end, up, you end up thinking that you're making up stories. Yeah. Because... You don't believe that you were in there, you were in it, you were in there. I mm. mean, like when these people were made wise men, I laughed my head off. I was like, ah, even me, I could have been wise woman if I wanted to. Yeah. And you ask yourself, why is it that the disciple girls that are there are not married? Yeah. Why is it that the disciple girls that are there don't have children? Because many have lost wombs in that process. Mm. Many disciples who came there with sicknesses. I've seen disciples die, dead bodies. Mm. Where you wake up, there's a dead body and must be thrown in a trash can. Trash can. Yes. Trash I've can. I've seen dead bodies where disciples... In, in the church. Oh, my God. Disciples have ailments, but we can't be prayed for. We're just working for the church. We're working for God. And you see people... I've, I don't know how many dead bodies or dead people I've seen within the church. Mm. But when you get back to South Africa, because remember, I had gone there through Philip Panda. Mm -hmm. So you get back to South Africa and you're like, oh, God is good. And everybody thinks you're the best person in the world because you're from TV Joshua's church. But when you're alone, you're like, ah, man, things are not added up. Mm -hmm. Like now I look back to say, how come I got married twice and both my husbands died? You know, mm -hmm. like for me, it's one of those things where you're like, number one, Panda said to me, you must marry at 27, and I'm sure it was going to be someone from his church. I didn't marry at 27. Mm. I got married to the age of 23, and my first husband died, you know? Mm. And when my first husband died, um, when I went back to Impact, Banda chased me out of the church. Mm. And um, when I remarried again, I remember mm. I sent an email to TB Joshua mm. saying, I'm getting married, da -da -da -da, please pray for me. And um, when I was, then I was told, um, no, I shouldn't get married. Um, I shouldn't get married. I should come back to Nigeria. And I was like, no, I want to get married again, okay. you know. Mm. And I got married to my second husband. And my second husband, okay, so my first marriage was four months. Mm. And my second marriage, he died, my husband. And I was kicked away from mm. the church. Yeah. And I was even kicked out of my mom's house. My mm. mom kicked me out of the house. Mm. So I had to find a place to stay. And then when I got married the second time around also, um, I was married then for five years. Then my husband passed on. Mm. But in hindsight, I look back and I say, why did I lose people that were so close to me? My father and I were very close. Ask anybody. Mm. I lost my husbands. And the one person that I'm supposed to, clo to be close to, that's my mother, is the one person that has, wants nothing to do with me. Mm. She's completely rejected she's me. Mm. She, she's completely rejected me. Yeah. And I always say to people, it's my truth. It's my story. I lived through it. Mm. And the fact that I was married twice, widowed twice, look, it doesn't define me. It happened to me. Yeah. If it's a spiritual thing or whatever the case is, I don't know what the flip happened, but people died. Do you mm. understand? Mm. So for me right now, it's a matter of, I sit back and I look at my life in hindsight and I'm thinking, what happened? For example, when the building collapsed in Nigeria, yeah. mm -hmm. when the building collapsed in Nigeria, I was no longer part of the church. But I was contacted to say I must um, assist with driving around to the different provinces in South Who Africa. Who contacted you? Uh, by the office, the TV Joshua TV office. From yes. Lagos or from here? Yes. No, no, no. I was contacted to go to the office in Rivonia. I got to the office in Rivonia. TV Joshua was called that I'm there already. Then he spoke to me. Okay. And the instruction he gives was... You, he gave yes, you instructions. The instruction was that I need to assist with um, giving the families 
money. Financial. Yes, financial yeah. whatnot. So we would drive around with like bags of money. Okay. So for example, if your husband or your wife passed on, we get there, we speak to you. We all knew we had to say the same thing and we mm. leave 100,000 or 200,000 with you and we leave. Mm. So all of that was done to try and silence the families because of the deaths that were there. Yeah. I remember when the building collapsed, people were phoning me saying, are you at synagogue? And I'm like, no, I'm back in South Africa. But the most amazing thing, the building collapsed on the other side, but with this side where the church was, the building didn't collapse because anyways, that's where we sleep, that's where the disciples sleep, and that's where T.B. Joshua sleeps up there at the top. So, um, most of the business people that used to tie the T.B. Joshua, mm. their businesses are either crumbling, or they're not making it well, mm. or they've stopped for some reason. I, but after my dad's burial, that was the last time I actually had full access to my dad's house. Okay. Mm where mm. I was literally had no more access to the house because I think at that time, that's when I wanted to start talking about the hurts, the pains and everything okay. that I had that been through, yeah. you know, but then I was then taken back. I think I was then working at the synagogue at Cape Town branch. Okay. Um, I became a worship leader there at the Cape Town branch also because okay. at that time, TV Joshua had just established at Cape Town Trying branch. To expand, there. Yeah. But now the, the, the girl and the guy, I forgot their names, the disciples that were there, they also left the church. They gone back to the UK. Mm. It's like everyone, that I was close to that were key. All of them has just left the church and it's, mm. that's it. Mm. And I always ask myself to say, even some of the Nigerian sisters that have left the church, we still communicate through Facebook, through WhatsApp and everything. Mm. And all of them will always cry and say, no one will believe us. No one will believe what we want to mm. say. Mm -hmm. That is why even when Pesola wrote the book, mm. she was so ostracized about what she was yeah, saying. Yeah. And I remember saying, but I can't sit back and say she's lying because I know her. Yeah. Mm. I lived with her. And some of these things that she's saying are things that I know I've seen and lived through them mm. myself. Mm. I might not know certain things that happened before I got there, but I was there. I lived in that moment. I was there. I know exactly what was going on in there. Mm. So I am expecting backlash. I am expecting that because TB Joshua, once you start criticizing him, they'll have a Sunday service yeah. in your name. They'll do a show YouTube, video. Yeah, they'll do a YouTube video. They'll probably yeah. dig up all my archives when I was delivered. Yeah. And they'll probably create stories of Sita doing that. You edit that. stuff they'll and edit all that. Stuff. Mm. Or, oh, or they'll bring people to come and say things about me. I'm waiting for it and it's not going to move me. Yeah. Okay. Oh, then his office mm -hmm. has TVs everywhere. Okay. Ah. So, <laughs> so what happens is all the TVs there, there's tapes. So we tape, 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 everything. So when breaking news, everything comes, it comes through to us and everything. Okay. So most of the time we would sit there and um, he would come on stage and speak about it. And it's a prophecy, you know? And then we go back to the editing room and we'll edit the dates, edit everything as if it was said, said a before. year before it actually happened. Yeah. So Liar. Yeah, mm. so then you see these things. But now remember at synagogue, the fact that you're a chorister does not mean that you won't work in all the departments. Yeah, you, you worked in every single department in uh, at synagogue. So you'd see these things and you'd pinch yourself on. I remember there was a Samoma who came to synagogue from South Africa mm. and she was assigned to me. And she was sitting there and we were talking and then I think Prophet wanted to Prophet had said he's going to speak to her, he's gonna prophesy on her. And mm. this woman had already taken off her beads in the room. Yeah. And Prophet said, Tell her to put them back on. Mm. She mustn't take them uh -huh. off. And mm. then I had to tell her to say, Put these beads on. And the woman says, No, I'm from Realine. They said I'm healed. I don't want this thing again. Yeah. Said, put those things back on. So she put them back on. Then we went on church there and then there was a prophecy about her and then the woman couldn't speak English so I had to translate. Yeah. So uh Jesus said, said something to her and the woman he said to her, You are wearing beads and blah, 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 blah. Mm. the woman says, Yes, but you saw them in prayer line and, and I'm saying uh, uh, uh so immediately like you know when you speak, yeah, we hold the mic for yeah. you. Okay. But when you say something wrong, we quickly put yeah. it out yeah. and then the screen blanks. Yeah, something and we that come you don't back want. and we say, Don't say this, say it like this, like this, like this, like this. Then it will come back on air again. Then we'll go. Grrr. So if you're not saying what we want you to say, that yeah. is why you won't see our face. We'll put the mic like this. And then maybe Timmy Joshua will speak. And then you're not saying something right. Immediately the chorister knows. They'll just start a song out of nowhere. Mm. Then we'll pull you back again and we we'll correct mm. you. You must say this and this and this and this. Mm. If you don't say this and this and this and this, you won't appear on TV. Mm. You won't. Nah, 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 nah. So most of the people. They will stand there and they will say things that we are whispering for them to say in the ear. Say, say this, say this, say this, say this, don't say this, don't say this. If you don't, we edit you out completely and that's that. Mm. So these are the things that we learned from there and I was like, 
I could actually open a church in South Africa. Mm. Because uh, you, you also got information, and then when TB Joshua is moving around and prophesying, yeah, you yeah. give him the information. So, 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 isn't it before visitors come? Uh, we already yeah. remember there's a visitors form. You give us all the information okay. yes. about you. What's your what? Oh, what, and here's the thing: if you've been to synagogue, guys, why is it on Sunday, Saturday before the actual prayer line? You are told you must wear your clothes that you will wear on the day of prayer light. So you wear it on Saturday before the prayer light. So whatever clothes you're going to wear on Sunday for the prayer line, yeah. wear it on Saturday because that's when they do the pre-recording of you. Yeah. So obviously, let's say Saturday I'll be wearing this. On mm. Sunday I'll wear this top. So they'll say to you, everyone must change and wear the clothes that they will wear on Sunday service. Mm. Then you go and wear those clothes, you do your pre -record. Already, we already know that, oh, that one's wearing a pink dress, that one's wearing a black dress. Ah. Like so Sunday comes, the instruction is you wear the same clothes you did for pre-recording, isn't yeah. it? So by the time TV Joshua comes out, we already... You have a list. We have a list of saying, um, that one with the red top or that one with the green top, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So when it comes to you, you, you would never think of it. You'll think, yeah. oh, prophecy, yes, I receive, and this, and this, and this. If you've been to synagogue, you will know. Before prayer line, they'll say, wear the dress that you wore. There were clothes that you're going to wear on Sunday at the service. Mm -hmm. Wear it Saturday for the pre-recording. Mm -hmm. So by then, and the camera people are there. So when it's, and then they'll say to you, you guys must sleep early that night. You guys go and sleep. That night, we don't sleep. We are replaying all that cassette to say, uh -huh, daddy, that one with the pink. Uh -huh, this one with that one. Ah, that one works for governments in South Africa. There. This and this and this and this. this. Mm. Then you'll find that you'll be specially Targets. called out. Yeah. And then daddy wants to see you. But we already know your profile. So by the time you go and see him one on one, he knows you, everything. He knows about everything. You and you're thinking, He's oh, God, God, is God. oh, God is God. for me. But already we've done this. So people will probably say, but see, Claire, you still continued going even after your husband's died with your kids. Yes, I did. I continued going because every time I went there to go see TV Josh, I always came back with the big brown envelope. Hmm. Every time I went there. Dollars. Any time I want to go to see me, Joshua, I would just pick up the phone and say, Daddy, I want to come. And I would go. I remember I went there with my kids because I thought, ah, let me go for prayer for premature death, you know, because hmm. their fathers have passed hmm. on. Hmm. My hmm. father has passed on. We need deliverance from premature death. Yeah. So we went there, got to synagogue. We stayed there for some time. Okay. I came back. And I think the last time I went there was in 20... 2017, 2018, if I'm okay. not mistaken. Okay. But when I got there again, when I was there with my kids, for me, it was just one of those experiences where you see, okay, fine, I'm here, it's nice, thank you very much, but you come back with money. But then again, what I want to put out there is that there's nothing horrible, there's no deceit, there's no fraud, there's no uh, promiscuity, or whatever you want to name it, that I've, that I've done, that I've ever been called out for by either okay. TV Joshua or Banda. Yeah. So now, um, what what can you say to somebody who's watching right now? Yeah. Somebody who believes so much in TV Joshua, what, what, what can you say, what advice can you give to somebody who's like that, who's mm. watching right now? Take a minute and say that before we move to the yeah. next one. Because <laughs> we're closing this now. Because we still have Pastor Chris, we Pastor still Chris. have Rafael, Tan 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 we still mm. have, uh, you know, so... I think for me, yeah. more, more than anything, um, I say this, I don't do church. I don't go to church. Why? Because I'm saying I'm waiting for the day when God will come and reveal himself personally to me. Because I ask myself, why is it in every single church I go to, I'll always be handpicked by a man of God. You understand? So for me, it's about strive and seek your own salvation by yourself. Okay. You know? And mm. that is why I'm in this campaign of Kwanel mm. and I am the voice to the voiceless. We are saying enough is enough. There are people who are sitting who are watching me now and they're saying, Sisha, you are brave. Mm. Sisha, I remember. Sisha, this. Yeah. Sisha, that. I am the voice to the voice, not because I'm revenging on mm -hmm. anyone, mm -hmm. but I'd be damned. I do not want anyone to go through or have a taste of what I went through. Mm. The fact that I'm not sick, I don't have HIV or whatever today, is not because I'm clever. Mm. It's because maybe, yeah, that supernatural God power is mm. working. Yes, you understand? That's God. Because for me, I was just all over the place. You understand? Mm. So for me right now, it's a matter of saying, wake up, smell the coffee. You find your God for yourself 
And that is that. And if you're a parent, this thing of giving your children away to churches and making them disciples and making them pastors and saying they must speak a certain mm. way, dress a certain way, hey, I was once like them. Mm. Look what, what happened to me. You don't do that. Let's, let's move on. <laughs> we, have, we, have, we have just about...